Welcome back to Inspired by Grace. This is a series of 12 sessions designed to help you understand grace and explore the giftings that God has given to you. In lesson three, we'll look at some of those undeserved gifts. And I'll begin with a focus story that is too often a reality. They found her curled up in a ball in the hall closet, hidden behind a pile of dirty clothes. And when the policeman opened the door, she winced and she buried her head between her knees, shivering. Oh, you're safe now, he cooed. We're the police and no one's going to hurt you anymore. But instead of relaxing, her six-year-old emaciated frame shook even more noticeably. Every officer present quickly understood the child's terror. Her house had obviously been in disarray for years. There were signs of violence and neglect everywhere. Her body bore the marks of abuse. Her parents had both been arrested on drug charges. And now she was all alone. How would you like to go with us for a good hot lunch? Suggested the officer, eager to help this poor child. What's your favorite food? She relaxed a bit and she mumbled, Pizza. But why would you want to buy my lunch? You don't know me. I haven't earned it. And my dad even said I was no good. Thus began a long process of trust-building conversations to help this abandoned child believe that there are good people in the world. Strangers who will do nice things and give you gifts, even if you have nothing to earn their kindness. She could not believe someone would take her to dinner just to be nice. She'd never dared to believe she'd ever be free to make her own decisions. The thought never crossed her mind that she actually had any value. This little girl could represent so many people who have experienced a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. Years of imprisonment in a loveless situation have understandably caused many people to become hard and skeptical. Life has taught them that they're not worthy. People have treated them so poorly that they feel worthless. Then, when someone comes along and offers them grace, undeserved favor, they react with suspicion and fear. They have an even harder time believing that there's a good God who offers a heavenly home to those who will let Him be their God. It sounds too good to be true. But the good news of the gospel is not just the news that all sins can be forgiven. It's the news that Jesus wants to join His Spirit to ours and give us all the internal love and power that we need to live an abundant life. God not only forgives, He gives free gifts to His children. Just by believing and obeying God, someone can move from being alone and rejected to being an integral part of the greatest endeavor of all time. They can move from being derided to being affirmed. They can leave their closet and enjoy blessings unlike they have ever known. The enemy accuses, berates, and controls. God affirms and blesses, sets people free to be the best they can be. God gives obedient believers meaningful roles in His kingdom. He does wonderful works through them, and all of this on His dime. It's not because we're good. It's just because he's righteous and good and loving. He uses the imperfect, the wounded, the intimidated. All they have to do is to learn to accept and give his great grace. What a difference when someone is inspired by grace. The concept we're focusing on in this session is true, but it's more difficult to embrace than someone might imagine. Please share your thoughts with your group before we turn to God's Word for more insight.
On November 14th, 2021, God gave this prophecy to Acts 2 Ministries. My people, my people, it's by my grace that you're saved. It's by my grace that you stand here where you are. It's by the death I died and the price I paid for you that you're here today in my presence. I love what I feel from your heart to me. I love your praises. I love to be in this place with you. I love walking and talking with each of you day by day. Every day, wherever you are, I love to walk and talk with you. I have a lot to say to you. I have a lot to give through you to the world around you. My grace is for all. My grace is for all. This is the time of grace. Reach with my spirit. Reach with my love to those near you, to everyone you come in contact with. Come with the grace, the love, the mercy, the power that you feel from my majesty in this place. Bring it out to the marketplace. Reach out with my hands. You are my only hands and my feet now. I have promised you great things. I have promised a great moving of my spirit and tell you it is now. It's already happening among you. Continue to believe. Continue to have confidence in my name. Continue to walk in the way I am calling you. When you hear my voice saying, go this way, go that way, walk with me and talk with me every day. I will reach many, many hungry souls through you. Now that was an example of God speaking a rhema, a spoken word, that agrees with his logos, the written word. Psalms chapter 139 indicates that God had plans for us before we were born. See, believers get to be a part of God's purpose. He's given us gifts so that we can play our unique part in His plan. Our preferences and our interests were built into us so we could be drawn into what God wanted us to do. God made the plan, but we must choose to live it out. So pay attention to your desires. If they're godly, their direction. For example, Jesus, while on earth, had compassion for two blind men, or at times he had compassion for the crowd. So he just ministered to them. Romans chapter 12 tells us we all have differing gifts. So let's read what Paul has to say about the gifts, beginning with verse 6. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Now that's some good advice. For the rest of this session... We'll unpack the first three gifts mentioned in Romans 12, and we'll look at the remaining four gifts in session number four. The first of these gifts is the prophetic. Verse 6 said, So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given to you. Prophetic people tend to see things in black and white. They tend to get angered by injustice and have a strong sense of morals and values. Like John the Baptist, who called for repentance, but 
the prophetic need to be careful not to be too harsh and rigid. The second kind of gifting mentioned was ministry or service. Verse 7, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. Now, the Greek word there is diakonia, which means waiter. So people with this gifting kind of see what others don't see. and They're really hospitable like Martha was. They're sensitive to other people's needs. What they have to guard against is they can get overcommitted or they might become a people pleaser. And then the third kind of gifting mentioned is teaching. Verse 7, if you're a teacher, teach well. Teachers delight in details and random information and facts like Jeopardy contestants. They can make things understandable, yet they can, because they know so much, become proud because knowledge puffs up. So, to recap, God has given gifts to individuals so they can be a part of his body. His grace inspires us and allows us to activate those giftings. It's through our gifting that God blesses us and the lives of those that we touch. You can do some of that grace giving right now as you finish your discussion and prayer time.